Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. Now, the main news from today, well, yesterday, is that it does now look like Craig Bellamy will be leaving Burnley Football Club. Now, it's been an interesting one, this one, because the reports at first were, yes, he's leaving, then the reports changed to he's staying. And then even yesterday, in Scott Parker's press conference, a lot of the journalists and reporters that were there reported that Craig Bellamy will remain as part of Scott Parker's backroom staff. And as I mentioned on yesterday's show, Scott Parker even spoke very highly of Craig in his first interview at the club, saying he sport with him, you know, and he, worked, he played together at West Ham. Uh, but it does now look like he will be leaving. I said it a few few shows ago that he had spoken to Wales, and if he gets the job, he will probably go to Wales, even though he wants to stay. But an opportunity like Wales might never come again, right? Well, it turns out that I don't think many people thought he would get this, and I'm not for one second saying he's not good enough for it or anything like that. I just feel like your first manager's role as an international manager, it's a bit bizarre to me, but it does look like the FA, sorry, the Football Association of Wales do want to give Craig Bellamy the job. Now, this has actually come from BBC Sport Wales, so it's pretty legit, and they are reporting that uh, Craig Bellamy is set to be offered the job and he, and he is going to accept it. However, what they are saying is the final details still need to be ironed out with Craig and with Burnley Football Club. So it potentially could fall through. It's not a full-on done deal yet, but if Craig wants a job and Wales want him, it's going to get done. Burnley, Burnley won't stand in his way and, and obviously not. But yeah, it is looking like Bellamy is leaving now, even though yesterday from Scott Barker's press conference, the the, the the reports were that Bellamy will be part of his, his backroom staff alongside Jensen, Jackson and Jonathan Hill, who Scott brought in. But we'll get on to that in a bit. But yeah, it was the BBC Sport Wales that reported it and they said Craig Bellamy is set to be named as the new Wales manager. The 44-year-old has emerged as the Football Association of Wales' first choice to replace Rob Page, who was sacked last month. Bellamy is currently at Burnley, where he had been acting head coach before Scott Parker's appointment last week. Parker was keen to work with the Welshman, but it appears the former Wales captain is attracted to managing his country. Fair enough. BBC Sport Wales understands the final details of the deal are still to be agreed by both, uh, sorry, with both Bellamy and Burnley, but an appointment is understood to be close, bringing an end to the search to replace Page, who was sacked in June after Wales failed to qualify, sorry, failed to qualify for Euro 2024. Like I said, I said this a few, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, definitely last week at some point, that if he was offered the job, he would leave Burnley. I said that even though I believe that to be true, because obviously that's what I was told at the time by quite a good source. But I remember when they told me, I remember thinking, well, he's not going to get offered that, so we're fine, he's going to stay. He's been offered it. Look, no one's going to begrudge him this move. He's managing his country. It's something everyone would want to do who, who's a coach. I'm just surprised he's got it now. I'm just surprised he's got it now. And I feel like it is a big risk, because I think Wales, they're pretty poor at the moment, obviously, because they didn't qualify for the Euros. And I'm not sure what he can do going in there to them. But at the same time, under Rob Page, they're absolutely atrocious. So on the flip side, maybe the only way is up. I don't know. I'm not Welsh. I don't pay too much attention to them. But obviously, maybe some of the Clarets Welsh fans in the comments, because I know we have a couple, um, will be able to fill me on that. But yeah, wish Craig all the best. Completely understand why he's going to manage his country. Obviously, 99% of people would do. At least he hasn't looked us in the eye and lied to us like a certain someone did after they'd been approached by a certain club. But yeah, looks like Craig Bellamy will be leaving Burnley despite reports as early as yesterday at around 11am saying that he will be staying. Because, as we said a few weeks ago, if he was to be offered the Wales job, he would leave. And that's exactly what's happened. Sticking with the management team... Scott Parker had his first ever press conference as the new Burnley boss yesterday. Obviously, reporters and journalists, and I think it was even streamed on the club's YouTube, all were invited down, asked him some questions. Uh, I think 
the club did put a video up. I think there was something... I didn't originally know they were streaming it because there were no streams. So if you saw my tweet saying, where's the stream? It's because they didn't advertise it. And they normally stream it on Twitter as well. And they didn't do that. They just put it on YouTube without telling anybody it was on YouTube. If they did tell anybody, I apologise because I missed it. But there is a video on the official club account from Scott Parker's press conference. I think, I think it's only about 20, 25 minutes long. So again... Obviously, when you finish watching this, if you haven't watched it yet, I fully recommend it. It speaks very well. It talks very well. There's a lot of comments in there, but I, through the help of some other journalists who were there and were tweeting the best bits, managed to get some of the best bits of what he said out. Um, it was quite interesting, actually, because, it, like I said, he did speak about uh, Bellamy and stuff in his, in his YouTube interview before, so it's going to be interesting to see now how he feels about Bellamy leaving. Obviously, I'm sure he'll be... You know, he'll be fine with it, be able to cope with it, but it'd be interesting to see how he does feel about that one. Um, but he did bring um, somebody to our attention. He is bringing in Jonathan Hill with him. I think he's the only person that he's brought with him, or at least he's the only person at this stage that he's brought with him. Now, it was originally port reported by one of the journalists that was there that he was a, a long-time assistant of Scott Parker, but it turns out I think he's more of a an analyst. Again, we don't know his exact role within the club yet, or if we do, I've missed it. But I'm sure we'll know over the next few days when the club finalise the details and, and bring everything out about who's who at the club. Because obviously with Bellamy leaving, I'm sure somebody will be able to slot in somewhere. Maybe Jensen will, will do it or Jackson. Um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But Jonathan Hill, who is um, a long-time colleague of, of Scott Parker, let's put it that way. They worked together at Fulham and Bournemouth. He's come with him, so uh, I'm sure we'll find out what his role is um, over the next few days. But just some of the best bits from Scott Parker's press conference. He did mention, I mentioned actually yesterday, didn't I, in the show yesterday, that I hoped he'd been, I think the word I said was studying, uh, since his um, abysmal record at Club Bruges, obviously getting sacked after, what, 10, 12 games or something. Um, and it turns out he has. He's, he's been like working alongside Thomas Tuchel, who's obviously very recently a Champions League winner. So he said he's been learning off him. So that's interesting because I know a lot of managers do this. They go away for a bit after they've been sacked or after something doesn't work out or even after a very successful spell. I know, I know Pep Guardiola did it. Pep Guardiola, when he left Bayern Munich, he did um, what's called a sabbatical where, where he went to New York and just had some time out. Said he learnt different ways of playing, learnt different ways of coaching and, and then he's gone to City and, and been just as good, if not better than what he was, or probably better than what he was at Bayern and just as good as what he were at, at Barcelona. So uh, I know Eddie Howe did it as well uh, before he got the Newcastle job. He, he, he did some shadowing and some, some things. So hopefully it, it helped Scott Parker improve it helps him learn more from these uh, incidents where it's not gone well in the Premier League for him or at Club Brugge so that were interesting but in terms of talking about um, Burnley Football Club he said he feels like the role uh, of head coach at Burnley Football Club is a fantastic opportunity for him personally and says he feels a freshness about it to get the job done he says it was a long thorough process and he says that's a positive because you get to know the ownership and where they see the football club. So he's obviously referring to Alan Pearce and ALK there. Uh, he says he has something to prove um, and so do the team. So not just him, but the team as well. Obviously a football club that was relegated last year. He's not done very well in his last job. So he, he feels like he's chomping at the bit to, to prove something. Uh, some of the other things as well. The bit that I liked, <laughs> it, it buttered me up and, and of anyone's, but the bit that I like where he said is, this is a Premier League football club and we have to try our damned hardest to get back there. We will endeavour to do that. Now, obviously, he's going to say he wants promotion, right? But I like the fact that he called us a Premier League football club. And I feel like we probably aren't... I know some people like to say, oh, we're Little or Burnley punching above our weight, and we are. But I think when you look at the last, what, 10 years of Premier League football, Burnley have been in, in there, seven or eight of them. So I think based on that, I think we deserve to be within the Premier League conversation, whereas just nobody ever does. So I did enjoy that. I did enjoy that comment. Um, and another thing, uh, I've said a lot, we have to back him and we have to make sure that the fans don't get on his back early. And he kind of alludes to that in this next comment. He says, the fans have a vital role to play for us. They can be the driving force that I need and the players need, I'm hoping they get behind us. So please, we need to get behind the, the team. We need to get behind the management. It doesn't matter whether you were underwhelmed like I was when he was brought in. It doesn't matter whether you wanted him or not, or whether you wanted Ruud van Nistelrooy or even Craig Bellamy. 
Scott Parker is a man now. It's time to back him. But yeah, his first ever press conference as a manager, sorry, <laughs> head coach of Burnley Football Club was today. You can watch it on the club's YouTube channel now. I say now, in about another five minutes when this video is finished. But yeah, he said some good things and some things that, again, like I said yesterday, I know he's very well media trained, but some things that got me excited for the upcoming season. Elsewhere, and just to finish up, we're going to just discuss a couple of rumours that were out there yesterday. Now, first of all, it has come from Italian news organisation Tutto Sport. Definitely butchered that. They're reporting that apparently Roma have joined Ajax in the race for Burnley striker Valt Veghorst, who is thought to be available for around 10 million euros. Now, I'm not sure on this one. I feel like this is because it's gone a bit quiet recently on the Veghorst thing, hasn't it? Right, because he's at the euros. And I think I might be wrong, but this is just a, a hunch. I feel like this is agent talk. It just kind of feels like an agent going, hey, remember this? We need to get this sorted kind of thing. Like it's gone quiet, and all of a sudden there's a new club in for him. I'd be surprised at that. And another thing, if he is available for 10 million euros and that is the price that we are getting for him, if we do get that for him, then very well played Burnley Football Club and Alan Pace because if we get 10 million euros for somebody that clearly wants to leave and is in the last year of his contract, then we have done very, very well. Elsewhere, The Athletic are reporting that Burnley are interested in signing Liverpool centre-back Nat Phillips in this summer's transfer window. Now, I appreciate The Athletic are a good source, but again, with this one, I just kind of feel like it's a bit lazy because Burnley seems to be linked with him every single summer for a start. Scott Parker actually did sign him, though, when he was at Bournemouth. Now, that could mean that we are actually interested in him because Scott Parker likes him or it's a lazy link by a journalist. I don't know. I've, and another thing with me for, with this one, I feel like the centre-backs that we have at the club, which is an area we're very well stacked on, by the way, are better than him. I think Bayer's better than him when he's playing or shares better than him towards the end of the season and um, who else is there Esteve how could I forget Esteve I think he's better than him as well probably around a similar ability to Ekdal if I'm being honest with you potentially some people could argue that Ekdal's better I don't know but I, I, I feel I, I feel like we've got better than him I don't I don't see why we would want him personally unless it's a Parker thing unless Parker's come in and said that's the man I want please get him for me but I feel like we have enough at centre-back. And even if he did come in and say that, Alan Pace and ALK be like, we have enough good players there. Please focus on a different area. Like I said, I feel like it's potentially a lazy link that Burnley are linked to him all the time and Scott Parker has previously signed him. So, I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see on that one, as Sasha says. But that's it from me for today. That's pretty much all there is out there. Uh, if you are new here, remember to subscribe. We do these shows every single weekday and we have discussion podcasts and live streams at the weekend. And we're hoping to turn this news show into a podcast as well. Now, the reason why I haven't put it out as a podcast yet is because I don't want it going on the Turfcast feed, just clogging up the Turfcast feed because the Turfcast feed on the podcast is for discussions and the live, stu and the live shows and stuff. Um, but I'm in talks with... Talk Sport, who obviously sponsored Turfcast, and I have to do it through them. To, to it's a bit complicated, but I essentially have to do it through Talk Sport. So fingers crossed, they say yes, and fingers crossed, I can start getting this out as a podcast as well. But also, like I said, make sure you subscribe if you are new here, and also make sure you always hit the like button. But let me know what you think in the comments below about Bellamy going to Wales. If it if it, if he does, it's looking like he is. It's a very good source, BBC Sport Wales. To be fair, we just need to iron out the details. Obviously, the stuff that Parker said in his press conference and the reported interest in Nat Phillips and Veghorst potentially going to Roma. I'll be surprised if he gets a club um, the size of Roma. Ajax are a decent sized club as well, to be fair, but I think Ajax, um, they've gone off the boil a bit over the last few years. I think it'd be a good fit for him, to be fair. Um, but yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with more stuff. But yeah, like I said, please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments below. And we'll be back as usual tomorrow.